What's up guys, I'm Newbie Dave and today we're building a blacksmith forge. Let's get started. How's it going everybody? Hope you're having a fantastic day. I had a wonderful Christmas vacation and I am back and energized and ready to get back into things. I am happy to say that over my Christmas break I did not play Minecraft at all. Sometimes it's good to just take a little break from things. I love Minecraft, I love playing it, but it's good to take a little break now and then so you don't get burnt out and I'm ready to get back into it. So one of the things I realized over the break is how much I love starting new worlds in Minecraft. It's it's kind of I'm I'm a little bit of an altaholic. I like creating new characters. I like starting games over. And a lot of the in-game content in games, it just doesn't really hold my attention for very long. And I seriously debated whether I was going to continue this world or just start like a new season three world and just start over from scratch because I absolutely love starting new worlds in Minecraft. But I've still got a lot of plan for this world and I don't, I feel like it would have been very unexpected and maybe a little disappointing to my viewers if I just kind of pop that on you guys. So I'm gonna stick with this one, but I am going to kind of, uh, I guess reset things a little bit in that even though I've got full netherite gear, even though I've got an elytra, even though I've got a storehouse full of supplies over there, that doesn't mean that I can't, you know, kind of return to basics a little bit and start with some kind of early game builds. I've got a brand new base over here, a clean slate with nothing built, and it's why not start a new base with some kind of beginner game builds. And so that's kind of what I want to do today with my blacksmith forge. It's going to be a very simple sort of retro build, uh, nothing terribly complicated, stuff that you can build something with very early on in the game. I've mentioned more than once that my personal build style in Minecraft is sort of rustic medieval type builds. And for, for me, when I think medieval, when I think rustic, I think blacksmith. I think armors and anvils and making armor and weapons from scratch. And that just seems very kind of romantic to me. And so that's when I was thinking about sort of starting over, starting a fresh base. That was the first thing that popped into my head. Now, what does all that have to do with me breaking down my beacon? No, I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not throwing it away. I'm not putting it in storage. I'm simply moving it because I need this space over here to build my new build. And even though I'm going to be building behind it over here, I think, uh, it's kind of in between my storage room and this new build that I'm going to be working on. So for now, I'm just going to kind of put it over here out of the way. I don't really need the beacon for this build. Maybe what I'll do, maybe what I'll do is kind of throw it over here somewhere. Yeah, like maybe right here, kind of behind my little bed. Just a little simple one row beacon. And then I can at least get speed or haste, probably speed. I don't think I need haste for this build. Just so it's kind of there, but I don't really need it. At some point, I think it would be really cool to actually move the beacon underneath my storage room, maybe right here in the middle, so that the beacon beam is kind of shooting through my portal, going through uh, the dome on the top of this thing. I think that would actually look really, really cool. But that's not the point of today's build, so let me fill in a little bit of this with dirt just to kind of make it look a little bit more natural. And as you can already see, I did clear out a lot of the oak trees that were on the bottom level of this little basin that I'm building in. It's, it just felt a little bit crowded around my storage room, so I cleared out a lot of the trees. I left some of them. I really love these giant oak trees, so I left that one. I left some of these around the periphery. Some of these are probably going to get cleared with future builds, but I did kind of clean up the area a little bit. And I think I'm going to need to do a little bit more clearing because this spot right here is really where I want to build this thing. This is kind of where the, the basin really starts to go up a lot more. And I think that this would be a really good spot to just kind of tuck this build kind of back in the corner. So let me remove some of these trees back here to make space. This is an interesting little oak tree and it's also not very little. It's like two giant oak trees grew side by side. And I think that maybe this is where the biome transitions from whatever this 
grassy biome is to the snowy mountains because the leaves change like in the middle of the tree. That's really interesting <laughs> because my beacon's only three blocks. It's just one level. The, uh, the range of this thing is not very great. So <laughs> like everywhere I go, I, I, I leave the range of the beacon. Oh, no, I, I never actually activated it. <laughs> I didn't have any ingots on me, so I just never set it. That's why it's not working. Newbie Dave. Here we go, cleared it all out. I also removed one level of dirt. There was a little bit more dirt. You can kind of see the dirt here. Just kind of flatten this a little bit so we have a nice flat spot to build on. Is either remove a layer of dirt or add more dirt to get all up to the same level. And I felt like going up would just be a little bit too tall. Like I could probably even remove one more level and be happy. But I think that I think I can sort of level all this out a little bit more and it'll take care of that. So for this build, it's not terribly big. It, I guess it does take up a bit of space, but it's mostly going to be open air. And so I'm gonna start back here in this back corner. By the way, it did snow while I was working on this. So there was a bunch of these little snow plats or whatever they're called on the ground. So I'm gonna come back here in the corner and place a spruce log there. I'm going to keep a gap in between the back wall and the, the snow bank over here on the side. Anytime I build something near an elevation change, I like to have one row in between the two, just so it's not right up against it. And this, this is going to be 11 blocks long, I think. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'll put another block there. And then we'll go one, two, three, and on the next one, put a spruce log there. So it's five blocks wide and 11 blocks long. We'll put another one there in the corner. And then I'm going to come in three on this side, one, two, three, and we'll put another spruce log there and one on the other side. So this is basically defining the shape of this thing. I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four for all of these. I always go up four blocks with my walls and I think I always need end up needing one more block on top. Maybe one day I'll fix that, but not today. So four blocks tall and then we're going to do some spruce over here. There's going to be a window on this wall and the window is going to be two by three. So I'm just gonna do a frame like this. We'll fill that in later. On this back wall, something very similar. There's going to be a one by two window on this side. So I'm gonna leave that open. This side is going to be solid, so I can just fill this whole thing in. Now here we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to dig back a little bit more into the snow on this side. Might need to remove some of the leaves on this tree. And I'm going to put a spruce log in that corner and that corner, we're gonna have two more pillars. So this is gonna be like a little alcove where we're gonna put some stuff. And then I'm just gonna fill all of these in with spruce planks. And then both of these sides we're going to leave open. This is actually going to be the entrance to this little building and then we're going to put something else over here. So it's really just the, the walls on these three sides with this little alcove right here. I'm going to go and put in my windows and for this I'm going to use steel, uh, not steel, iron. There's no steel in this game, that would be cool. I'm going to put some iron bars in there. I think the iron bars go really well with this build since it's kind of a blacksmith forge. I wanted to do the th this thing out of like stone or something since, you know, it's metalworking, but in the end, I think building it out of spruce, it kind of goes with the environment a little bit better. Next, we are going to put a roof on this thing. For the roof, I'm going to use uh, spruce wood slabs and cobblestone slabs. I know I've made the point multiple times that you should try to make your walls and your roofs out of different materials. I'm going to break that rule for this build. I just think... It, I think the spruce uh, roof looks better. It goes with the spruce roof that I have on my storage building over there. And so I'm, I'm just gonna do it, sorry. So I'm gonna come over to this side first. We're going to put some uh, cobblestone slabs going all the way across. And these are going to be on the top half of the block that is at the same level of that very top uh, spruce log for the pillar. This is gonna go all the way back like that. And then on the next row over, we're actually going to go up one row. And so we're going to be doing bottom slabs out of spruce. And then we'll do a cobblestone on the front of that. We're going to do the next row at the same elevation. And this is basically the pattern. We're going to do two rows at this slab height and then go up a, a half level. And then do two more rows and then go up again. I think because this is such a small building, this sort of 
slab style roof rather than using stairs is going to work out a lot better because I think if we made the roof out of stairs it would end up being too tall it would stick up too much and it would just look kind of weird. I need to get back here and on the other side we're going to also do cobblestone on the backs of each of these rows. Now I've reached this third elevation change. I'm not really counting that outer side. That's, I always do an overhang like that, so don't worry about that. So I've got one, two, here's the third one. Somewhere around here is the middle of this thing. So I'm actually gonna stop right there. I'm gonna come over here and do the other side and see where the two meet up. Cause we've also got this little alcove sticking out in the back and that's kind of a little bit weird. So we need to figure out what we're gonna do when the roof gets uh, meets between the alcove and the rest of the building. So this middle section where the two met up is going to be three blocks wide just because of the dimensions of this thing. That's okay, the middle of a roof, it's always allowed to be a little bit different, either a little bit wider or a little bit narrower or something because it's the middle, it's where two things are coming together. So I think for this alcove, I'm going to go all the way out like this and then maybe I'll connect the two sides like that. Is that gonna work? I think that works. Fortunately, this is the back half of this build and there's trees all around it. So I think once we get this thing put together, we'll probably never see it. All right, so let's go back down. So the roof looks good. Now we need to fill in these gaps underneath it. And this is really the main reason that I wanted to use spruce for the roof, even though I'm using spruce for the walls, is because it slabs, you get these little half uh, gaps in between the roof and the walls and I, you can't fill that in with a different material. You either have to leave it open or you have to use the same material. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna take the spruce logs up one more right here to meet the roof and then I'll just fill in all the gaps with little slabs here and there. So there we go, yeah, this is coming together. So that is the basic structure of this building. It's not really, a, I almost called it a house. It's not really a house, it's more of a workshop. Uh, so yeah, it's looking good. So now let's start doing some of the decoration on this. Uh, there's going to be, you, you may notice, wait a minute, that's only taking up like half this area over here. Don't worry, I'm gonna do like an outdoor uh, working craft area on this side, but first I wanna finish up this side. So the first thing I wanna do is come back here to this back wall. I'm gonna put some slabs there and Let's see, we'll put them here, kind of cutting off the top of that window, that's okay. So those are gonna be shelves. Right below that, I'm going to put a crafting table in the ground. And then I'm gonna put a chest, let's see, I'll put a chest on this side, and I wanna put a lantern on the other side, because it's kind of dark in here, so we need to light it up. Across the top, I'm gonna to put some barrels. Barrels are absolutely great. I don't know why I don't use barrels in more builds. Okay, they make really good decoration, but they're also really functional storage because they can open sideways like this, not just on the top like a chest. And so you can orient them in different directions and they look really good. So that's what I'm gonna do for the back wall. For this little alcove over here, I'm gonna put in six furnaces. Some of you probably saw that coming. And then above that, I think I'm gonna put some more shelves right there. And let me get up on top here. I think I'm gonna put another lantern right there and then a chest over there for the most part these chests and barrels they're more for decoration I and mean, obviously i could keep like some fuel in this chest i could keep some crafting supplies over here but really it's just for decoration on the outside of this i actually want to use torches for the lighting on the outside i think the torches even though lanterns look really really nice torches have that sort of rustic look to them that I think looks really good on the outside of buildings. Now for this little spot right here, this is where I'm gonna put an anvil, and I'm going to use some granite, please don't shoot me, uh, to sort of frame this thing. So the anvil's going to sit right there, and then I'm going to sort of frame this with some different granite blocks like slabs and stairs. Uh, granite is not one of my favorite blocks in the game, but as I mentioned earlier at some point in the series, I'm trying to be a little bit more um, adventurous with some of my build palettes. I tend to always use the same kind of uh, block types in a lot of my builds. You know, a lot of spruce, a lot of stone bricks, a lot of deep slate. And so I'm just trying to use some different things here and there. And honestly, with this resource pack that I've got, the Bedrock Tweaks, one of the tweaks that I got, it uh, the granite and diorite and stuff 
are a little bit softer. They're, they're not quite as jarring. And so I think that this actually works pretty good. So I'm not going for any particular pattern here. I'm just trying to build some sort of frame, some sort of structure around this. Uh, I want it to look kind of rough, sort of hewn. Maybe something kind of like that. Will that work? I think that'll work. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe I'll throw one more there. And so here's our anvil. We've got some furnaces over there. We've got a little workbench back here where we can do some stuff. So this is kind of the inside of the forge area. I'm I'm pretty sure that with a lantern there and a lantern there, this whole area should be lit up enough to prevent spawns. With the new 1.18 lighting rules for mobs, I think we're good. Don't worry about the floor, this is not going to stay dirt, I'm just going to wait until everything else is built to put in the floor that I want. So now let's come over to this side. So you can't really have a blacksmith area, you can't really have a forge without some sort of like furnace or... Uh, somewhere that you can like smelt the the materials and I realize that in Minecraft you can just do that in a furnace or a blast furnace but you know we're, we're role-playing here we're trying to build a world and so over here in this corner I want a sort of chimney I want a furnace area that looks like it's where you sort of smelt things and melt things down to work with and I am going to build this primarily out of brick blocks Brick is another one of those building blocks that I don't really use a whole lot, and I always wish I used it more. And so I'm just gonna jump right in and use it for this build. Now I will say, all of these bricks, every single piece of clay that I got for this came from my stone cutter villager back at my iron farm. You can trade one emerald for 10 clay. So don't, don't bother trying to go out into the world and find a ton of clay because it takes a lot of clay. You need four clay to make, uh, I think it's one clay per brick and then four bricks per brick block. I think, I think that's right. So it, it, point is, it takes a lot of clay. Don't bother trying to find out on your own. Just trade it with a villager. So let me get a couple slabs, a couple stairs, a couple walls, and then we'll get started on this thing. So I need this thing to be a little bit a ways away from this structure because there's going to be open fire in this thing and I don't want the building to catch fire. So if I come out one, two, three, then I think that should be far enough away. So I'm gonna do a stair there, a stair there, and we're gonna do a slab in the middle, nice. Uh, we'll come over here, we'll do bricks there. Uh, we'll do brick block here as well, and then behind this, I'm actually going to throw in a piece of netherrack. When I'm all done, I'll come back and light this thing, and this will be the open flame for this build. Surround that with a couple more bricks. I think I'm going to do some more upside down stairs back here. I love, 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 love mixing in stairs with regular solid blocks to add some texture and variety. I think I may actually come back and do that with these walls, because these walls, they're very bare, they're very plain. They need some stairs. Now on the front here, I'm gonna put a wall there and there. We'll put some iron fit bars in between. So that's gonna be like the grate for our protection, our safety. And I'm gonna just do some more uh, blocks all around this. Actually, I might do some more walls back here in the corner. You're probably not gonna see the corners too much, but if you do, I think the walls will look really good there. Now, one more level up, I'm going to do stairs on either side here and here. We'll do a solid block in the back like that, and then we'll do some more stairs right there. I think now we can go ahead and light this thing. And actually, I made a mistake. That should not be a solid block. That is going to be our blast furnace. This is where you'll actually be doing the smelting in this chimney, in this fireplace. So now we can light that up. And how cool is that? That looks really cool. This is very, very similar to a similar forge that I built uh, in my villager base at the end of season one, just slightly modified. And now that I look at it, this is actually, this needs to come back uh, one more row because I want to hide the furnace on this side. I want it to be completely surrounded by bricks. So I'm gonna surround the furnace on all sides with some stairs like this. I think maybe I'll top those walls with some stone slabs. Yeah, that looks good. Now let me go get a couple more walls. I had made those walls for a different purpose and then I ended up using them. So let's climb up on top of this and we're gonna go up. Let's go up uh, maybe four more blocks and then we're gonna do two walls on top and this will be our chimney. Does that look good? Yeah, that looks good. I like it. 
I like it. Yeah. Now to kind of finish up this outside area, I want to put in a fence that goes around this thing. So I think I need to fill some of this in with dirt. Uh, I want this whole inside courtyard area to be at the same elevation. And so we'll fill all this in with dirt and then I need to bring this whole little hillside here out a little bit more. So I'm actually gonna come back to this corner first. I'm going to put a spruce log right there. And then we'll put one over here in this corner. So we're gonna line that corner up with that one. We'll put one right there. Now, where's the entrance to this thing going to be? I think it's going to be right here. I'll probably put two gates right there. And so I'm gonna put some uh, spruce logs on either side of that. And then maybe I'll put one more spruce log right here. And now we can start throwing in fences in between most of these to connect them up to make the wall that's going to go around this thing. Just like that, that looks nice. We don't have to worry about the fences being too close to this fire because fences can't burn. And then these walls and the spruce back here, I'm pretty sure that they're far enough away from this flame that they won't catch fire. Now we can come in, now that we've got this whole area sort of blocked off and marked out, I'm gonna come in and replace all of this ground, uh, everything within the fence and inside the building, I'm going to replace with some stone brick blocks. You knew it was coming. I, of course I had to work stone brick blocks into this build somehow. I just love them so much, they look so good. If I wanted to be super picky, I would also go under the walls and under the, the fireplace over here. I'm not going to, because I'm never going to see under them. And one last thing that I want to do with this floor, because it is all very much the same now, uh, every here and there, I'm going to replace some of this with gravel. I think gravel is a really nice way to make a stone floor look worn. So no particular pattern, just little patches here or there. Every now and then I'll do some slightly bigger patches like this. I could maybe also mix in some cobblestone, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. I think this is a small enough area that the gravel kind of achieves the effect that I'm after. And with that, let me do a little bit more detailing work, just throw in a couple decorations here and there, and then I think we can wrap this build up. Alright you guys, you ready to see how it turned out? So here we go out of our storage building. Got a nice lovely little path now. Bone mealed some of the grass around it, put in some flowers, some lighting, and you come up here to our nice new little blacksmith forge area. So throw in a couple of armor stands obviously. We've got some blocks back here for decoration, like maybe these are the resources that we're going to be smelting up. Throw in a cauldron of water because like if you're going to be forging things you need somewhere to cool it off. It might make sense for that to be by the anvil but I, I don't know. This is where I put it. Also I did end up replacing some of the planks in this wall with stairs just to give that wall some depth and I really really like how that turned out. I was going to do something similar on this inner wall but decided to just go with the picture instead. I don't use paintings very often and I want to. I want to start doing things that I'm not used to doing in Minecraft and that's one of them. I think at some point I also want to come and start decorating with banners more but I couldn't think of any good banner designs off the top of my mind and didn't want to just throw something in there so maybe I'll come back and do that at some other point in the future. But yeah, here's our new little forge area and I really like it. I think this is a really good first building to add to our new base, not counting the giant storage building that we worked on last time. And I really like the way it's kind of framed from down here. You, you got the little path that goes up to the hill. You can see the chimney sticking up there, but it is still kind of tucked away behind the trees. Like I'm probably gonna come in, maybe plant a few more trees down here to just kind of help mask it a little bit. I did have to remove a lot of trees to clear space for this build and to get up here, but I really like this area. I picked this mountainy area because of the trees, because of the mountains, because of this basin, and I don't want to just go completely reforming all of this and like throw away everything that's here. So I want to try to keep that nice naturalistic look to this new base. 
That's going to wrap things up for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, please hit that like button. And while you're down there, feel free to subscribe so you'll get notified of future episodes as they come out. Thanks, y'all, and have a great day.